Okay, our recording has started. Okay, so let's start our presentation. Okay, I hope everybody can see my screen. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Haidar and I'm the communication engineer at TechPros. And today I would like to present our experiment result with integration of uh, Huawei BBU 5900 with Magma Core Network. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we would like to introduce TechBros. So uh, we are mainly a telecommunication company founded in Dusseldorf in 2017. And we have been a uh, full member since uh, 2020. And uh, last week or two weeks ago, we are officially implementation partner of Magma in, for the region uh, Europe. And so, um, in this in this webinar we would like to show you what we have experimented experimented so far with the magma so uh, we all, we work not only with private institution but also public and social sectors and besides telecommunication we are also working on iot computer vision ai and data science so let's get started so yeah, we are launched it in 2017. Our, we have 34 clients so far, and we have 20 staff on board um, in total, 20 plus. And we collaborate not only with industry, but also academics. And our, our headquarter is in Germany, but we have branch in Indonesia and Romania. So these are our... Um, of work. So um, first of all, we'd like to introduce our TechBurst 5. So TechBurst 5 is our uh, open source private network solution uh, for LTE, 5G, and Wi-Fi network. It is powered by Magma. And uh, we use it also for either fixed wireless access, enterprise cellular, or mobile broadband. And so you uh, it, our system is plug and play, so plug in with a community small cell into our TechBros5 gateway, and then you can manage the your private cellular network via SRS hosted portal, so on the cloud. <laughs> so first of all, I would like to introduce the architecture of Magma. So uh, first, we have the Inot B radio. Uh, let me use lesser pointer. So first of all, this is the inotb, and it's connected to our access gateway uh, via S1 and TR069 interface. And from, from the access gateway, it is connected to the orchestrator via gRPC uh, protocol. And the orchestrator normally resides in the cloud. And also uh, the Access Gateway provides the SGI interface to connect to the internet for the UE that connected to the inotb that is managed by the Access Gateway. And also, uh, if you want to integrate with existing operator core network, we have Federation Gateway that act as proxy to connect to the uh, like operator core network. So we have like S6S, X6A, GXGY uh, interface, and those are handled by the Federation Gateway. So uh, normally we, we use like InnoTB that, that has been supported by the uh, Magma. So it has the TR069 interface. And from that, uh, we can manage the InnoTB directly for, from uh, the access gateway such as the parameter, and we can also check like the 
tracing performance directly from the access gateway. But uh, in this case, we have experimented with legacy uh, radio, which is Huawei BBU 5900. And in that case, we don't have the R069 interface. So uh, instead of that, we use uh, its own uh, OMC or LMT. So uh, we can either use like for Huawei, I think it's U2020, but uh, because this is just a lab experiment and we want to isolate it in the lab environment, we use the LMT port like and connect it directly to our ZTP. Okay. So uh, basically this is the, our, what to do with the Magma. So we, we just use the quick start installation and you can uh, check the link here, how to install uh, by yourself. So this only requires like um, a, a mini PC, for example, our, our experiment simply use mini PC. It's not so expensive. It's cost like 200 or even 150 euros. And you can also do it by yourself. And these are the summary for the step that uh, you can do for the installation. So for us, you install Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. And then after that, you install the prerequisites such as uh, Fagran, VirtualBox, Docker. So it's the tool that we will use uh, for deployment. And then first we build the AGW access gateway. So for this, we use Fagrans and the virtual box for the virtual machine. So this, the access gateway runs on a virtual machine and Fagran is something like, uh, for Docker, it's like the Docker compost. So it makes your configuration easier. And the virtual box, uh, maybe as you can, as you already know, is the virtual machine. And for the orchestrator, uh, it, it runs on Docker. So we will deploy a local cloud that also runs on our hardware directly. So we don't use AWS or Azure. So we use it directly on, on premise. And then afterward, if they are successfully built, we'll connect the access gateway to the local cloud because it's on um, virtual machine. And then we need to connect it to the local cloud, which also run on the same hardware. Then we will use the NMS to manage our network and equipment. Okay, so as previously mentioned, uh, we not only use TechPros 5, but also TechPros ZTP. So this is our lab setup. So for BBU 5900, we use the FEGE0 on the UMPT board to for the core network connect connection and we connect it first uh, on et Ethernet one on the TechPros 5. So this will be our S1 interface. And then uh, from TechPros 5, uh, from the architecture, you can see that it, it will also provide the internet, the SGI interface. So the uh, we use this VLAN, the, the antenna, we use the Wi-Fi for the internet access. So normally we use also Ethernet, but uh, in this case, we, we only have one Ethernet port and one Wi-Fi. So we use the Wi-Fi, the VLAN as the Ethernet zero replacement. And also beside that, we have a ZTP that is connected to the LMT port. So normally on uh, this BPU for LMT port, we we connect it through um, USB to Ethernet adapter. And then we connect it to the uh, Ethernet zero of the ZTP. And from this, we can connect to our ZTP cloud and our system integrator can then integrate our uh, radio through the cl cloud. Okay. So what is ZTP? So our ZTP is a product to uh, save cost and simplify uh, in equipment integration. So normally uh, you will send your system integration to the site and it may uh, 
give extra cost for you. Uh, so you have to pay for accommodation, transportation, and also like uh, the pay for the system integration themselves. But in this case, we can send our uh, CTP device to our technician that also happened to install the, the equipment. And then he just needs to plug our ZTP to the equipment, such as the BBU. So just plug in the mini PC that we have shown before to the LMT port and then provide Wi-Fi access to our device. And after it has internet, it will connect to our cloud via our VPN. And then from our cloud, uh, our system integration integrator can then uh, access the our ZTP remotely. So that's the case of it. And also here, I want to show you the NMS. So this is what uh, it looks like. So this is where uh, we will manage our network and equipment. I will also maybe sh can show you the, the interface. I'll, I'll, I'll share my screen. Let me see. Okay. I'll share, change my screen sharing. Okay, so uh, I hope you, you guys can see. So this is our NMS uh, and this one actually runs on the cloud. So it's a bit, uh, the, the interface like the UI is the same on both the local cloud and the, uh, and the public cloud. So it will look the same and you can access the same thing here, but this one is on our S and here we can manage our inner tree and for our uh, experiment in our lab, we use here like add new inode B and we can enter test e not B and then we can enter serial number and description and then we continue and because we use uh, so the magma actually have support uh, for some devices so most of them like from Bicells and then also there is like from Neuron and Freedom Pi and we can uh, change the parameter and manage the equipment directly from our NMS but because we use uh, inode B that is not yet supported we need to activate this not be managed externally and then we can enter cell ID maybe you can just put one put one and then for the IP address, we can use, uh, let me check, okay, 60. And our experiment, we use this, and then we can save. So uh, because this is just uh, externally managed, usually it will, it doesn't show you whether it's connected or not. And the health, it cannot also display. But if we check like the tracing, it would show that it's, it is actually connected. So let's go back to our presentation. Okay, so we have performed this. And then uh, you can also forward the data that you input to uh, your system integrator. So the next step we integrate on the radio side. So as shown before, our BBU is LMT port is connected to the ZTP and then ZTP is connected to our cloud uh, using VPN. And then uh, our system integrator can remotely access the BBU using our cloud. And for the process, we, uh, we follow basically only basic integration process. Uh, we will not uh, delve too deep on this. Um, we want to focus more on the magma side. And so uh, it, the system integration will configure the routing, SGTP link, S1 interface, and so on. Yeah, so uh, for Huawei, this is uh, the interface for the 
LMT, uh, what do you call it, software, the OMC. So you can, uh, so the system integrator can perform MML command, uh, and he can also see alarm or event and also perform tracing and monitoring and also testing. And uh, after the system integration, the system integrator is done with his configuration. We can check also from the Magma side whether it is connected. So for this, we can go to MME info and check here. Uh, we can see that there's already connected in the, in the current status. Um, there's also actually in Magma a tool for uh, management of the inotb simple management like checking the status, uh, TX, RX, and also like the IP and status. Uh, it's called inotb CLI, but because we use uh, externally managed and also our BBU doesn't support TR069, uh, we, we, cannot, we cannot see it, we cannot use it. And here I also use the TCP dump command for getting the trace on our S1 interface. And then we can uh, filter for SCTP and, and we can see that the S1 setup request has been uh, successful. So uh, there's SCTP protocol and also S1 AP for S1. So after the SCTP, link is uh, up, it will init, initialize and then periodically send heartbeat. And also on the first uh, connection, it will also set up the S1 interface. So um, afterward, we can perform test call and this is how it would look like. So we can uh, perform like uh, video streaming, our website, but this is only for data, for Volte or EMS integration. We need first the Federation Gateway and also integrate it to the core network of the operator. So this we haven't done. Okay. And if you are in, interested more for about Magma, you can check some of the uh, documentation and also a course on EDX. So for EDX, I would recommend this, this one, Introduction to Magma Cloud Native Wireless Networking. And for the documentation, you can check on docs.magmacore.org. And if you want to ask something or maybe during inter installation, you have problem, you can go to the Slack channel of the Magma Core and you can then ask there. And there are also like um, some, some documentation that's not on the website, like what people discover. So it, I recommend also to join the Slack channel. So thank you very much. Uh, this is just a brief report of our experiment. Uh, you can visit us on our website in, at techbros, uh, www.techbros.io. And you can also visit our LinkedIn, Techbros GmbH, and you can also check my LinkedIn. And if you have any question, inquiry, and or other comment, you can also send us email here, info at techbros.io. And you can also follow our Instagram. We post content that is free related to our work here and be sure to like and follow us there. So thank you very much. Uh, maybe we can open our uh, question session now. Okay, can we have the slide letter header? Thanks. Uh, yeah, sure, Pa, I will send you. Um, maybe we can share also the recording later. I think it will be posted on our YouTube. Uh, so I will, I will have you update it. Thank you, Aida. Yeah. Uh, so, can I can I yeah. have a question here? Uh, interesting that uh, it's quite 
simple uh, the structure uh, i mean it is only for uh, data traffic only right <clears throat> yes for the moment uh, we don't have access to the core network yet so we cannot perform fault call for example so, or uh, yeah so now only only data i see i see okay yeah so actually we have done also previews uh webinar about magma i think the the last one before this was in sdx channel uh, i can also share you the link but sure, sure. Um, thank you and basically uh, magma is a software defined networking solution for lte and 5g and that's why uh, it's more flexible so it is a distributed epc core so uh so normally like in legacy run you have one mme to manage like 100 in b or more but the the strength of magma is it's more distributed so one in one access gateway can handle about uh if i remember correctly 16 or 20 uh yeah and you can uh you can scale as you grow so the the initial expense is smaller than traditional run you can have for example what i did for lab you can use like 200 euro uh 200 euro mini pc and it will act as your core network oh so yeah. does uh, uh reflect it based on the uh i mean the machine right the capacity of the machine i mean yes, exactly uh, yeah uh, uh, what would be the key factor for uh, the more? Uh, I mean, uh, dimensioning the dimension of the capacity would be based on the CPU or would be best or what? Uh... Yes. So for the dimensioning, uh, it depends on the CPU, the RAM, and also the network interface because Magma use open virtual switch. So uh, it also depend like the, the speed of your network interface. I see, I see. So CPU, yeah. the interface uh, card, yeah. um, interface port, yeah. And then yes. uh, the, uh, the size of random access memory like or the processing, I see, I see. So, uh, what would be the minimum uh i mean uh minimum ram minimum cpu clock uh, okay. for a typical uh i mean typically pc right yeah so i can share okay. again it's actually on the documentation here so this is the for the access gateway uh, we need here the AMD 64 dual core dual core processor yeah, yeah, yeah. around two gigahertz, and the RAM is yeah this is the minimum requirement right so four gigabyte is okay, and the storage only thirty two gigabyte. It's all all mentioned on the document uh, uh, on the Magma Core uh, portal right. Yeah, exactly. But here in docs.magmacore.org, it's quite uh, comprehensive, I'll say. And you can also check how we did the installation, like how we run the installation here. I show you the brief summary before, right? So you build the AGW. So everything, uh, so you pull, you pull the repository, basically you pull the 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 magma from the github okay. and then they have the the script for running the installation so uh here as you can see you just need to like for building the orchestrator you just run the build the build script build.py and then you can have like the option here and also for the access gateway uh we used fagran and then for uh you don't need to do configuration for the your virtual machine and you just use Fagran up magma so it's it's really simple actually yeah i see yeah so purpose of the bbu yeah. is actually for the access right the access net network 
So in order yeah. for the uh, user equipment, I mean the smartphone, yeah. to, to to get the connected to the EPC, it require a baseband unit. Uh, in this case, you are using a Huawei baseband unit, right? Yes. So um, so first our UE, um, maybe I can check if there's. Mm, let me see. Yeah, so basically, uh, our UE here is connected to the Inot B via UU interface. Uh, so first, it goes to the antenna. Antenna yes. goes to RRU, and then RRU goes to baseband unit. So it will process the signal from the RRU and and then uh, have the data sent to the EPC using the S1 protocol, right? Yes, exactly. But yeah. So this is a legacy run. So it goes to MME here with S1. And uh, and also like, uh, even though our, our magma is small uh, here, our magma is only like uh, one mini PC, we can deploy it um, many, uh, many, magma and spread it on our network. And then it will uh, orchestrate with our orchestrator. And then like, if you make a configuration on network level, the, net, the orchestrator will communicate with all of the uh, AGW in, in the group of the configuration that we perform and uh, accordingly set, uh, configure them. Like, so we have a uh, network level configuration. Like if we, if we look here, uh, am I still screen sharing? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah so uh, we, can, we can group our gateway to a pool and then we can have uh, the setting for, for the group. So, so yeah, that's, that's what the strength point I think from Magma. And also, uh, if you see here on the access gateway, it, it has the functionality of the EPC, even though uh, you can, you can uh, integrate with existing core network, but uh, like the HSS, PCRF, OCS, their functionalities are already inside the access gateway. So like the MME, so the HSS is called subscriber D, the process inside the access gateway and PCRF, um, I think poly CD. Mm. So, okay. so it's, it's what uh, we mean by software defined networking. So you don't need separate server for those functionality because it's included in, in, in the access gateway. So if you, if you don't have anything existing core network, you don't need to build uh, this. Okay. You can you can simply just use the access gateway. It has the functionality of the core network. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I just I just uh, imagine. Uh, I'm I just wondering if I would like to uh, build like of um, small community uh, internet wireless. I mean, like uh, RTRW net. Uh, probably you know about it. Okay. So I, I could implement this using this uh, access gateway as a yes. RTR net. Yes, but, and actually um, one more strength of Magma is it's radio access agnostic. So as long mm -hmm. as, uh, okay. what do you call it? Yes, the, yes, I mean, the interface, I mean technology, yeah. <laughs> technology uh, yeah. interface, right? Not yes. only 5G, but also Wi-Fi, right? Yes, because it's on the core side, right? Yeah. And I think it's somewhere around here. So beside the 4G and 5G, it also supports fixed wireless access and also like uh, open Wi-Fi. I see that. And yeah, it, I forgot where it is. I think it should, it should be here. And okay. somewhere there. Yeah, you can check it, the documentation. So you can also use Wi-Fi as the access point. And actually, uh, we are currently um, 
still planning we uh, for, uh, for uh, what you told me just now but on an island if you know okay. Alor, if you know Alor, yes we have yeah we have performed like the drive test and we talk uh, with people I over see. there uh, because uh, there was like a news that a student that wants to access the uh, material have to go to the hill hilltop and access <laughs> it there so we want to help them by building see, uh, this fixed wireless access over there with with magma yeah yes during this pandemic actually although it's already uh, uh, open now for the uh, face to face <laughs> school I yes. mean, uh, before that, we have to do all from home. So it's uh, studying from home, studying remotely. So uh, I can imagine that in Alor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's yeah. so rural. Very yeah. scarce for uh, is uh, this resource for the uh, infrastructure is uh, limited, right? Yes. So, I mean, but... this is the answer for that. Yes, but so you can either build four G. 5g or even wi-fi with magma and then integrate it also like to the internet like uh maybe you need to build a backhaul network if it's like very rural but uh i think like in alor there's like the big city also and if we just connected the backhaul there uh even the the village will get the internet access i see i see yeah, so. yes Okay, so, uh, so with the Federation Gateway and Operator Core, it's actually still working. But I see, I see. Nice, nice. Okay. Maybe other participant wants to ask also. Maybe Deka, Ahmad. Okay, if there's no more question, maybe we can end our meeting here. And as before, if you have any question, uh, you can you can go here to our LinkedIn and also our email. And if you want to check out our product, you can go to our website. We have um, more detailed explanation for our products there. So thank you very much for your participation today. Uh, so we'll end the meeting here and I'll uh, and have a great weekend for you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aida. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great weekend all. Bye. Good weekend all. Bye. Waalaikumsalam.